have news with Chad Vader. Chad Vader! <laughs> I do not need this piece of paper anymore, Chad. Goodbye to it. Okay, sounds good to me. What's going on there? Oh, so much is going on in the news. <laughs> Tell us about it. Wow. I will. Warner Brothers will start offering digital movie rentals through Facebook, starting with Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. The cost per rental is 30 Facebook credits, which amounts to about $3. In related news, the Financial Times reports that the Facebook credit is strong against the euro and the Japanese yen <laughs> in the world money market. The dollar has slipped against the Facebook credit, forecasting <laughs> doom for the popular U.S. currency. This reporter has drawn out all of his savings and cashed in his 401k and is converting it all to Facebook credits, oh, dear. which means that I now have a strong, secure financial future and I can watch The Dark Knight about 300 times. <laughs> you know... Uh, I didn't even know such things as Facebook credits existed. Is, is, is that new? I still don't know how to even get them. What's a Facebook credit? Is that new? Like, you can buy, like, yeah. goofy little gifts and stuff for people, but I think this is, like, the first... Credits. Yeah, like, farm earn, bill stuff and whatnot. How do you earn them? You don't earn them. You purchase them with with American money, with hard-earned cash. It just does, still doesn't make sense You know, to me. when you look at this, and you look at Sony's announcement today, yeah, the there's, an I, there's an iPhone app now where, I don't know how much the app is, uh, it hasn't been announced yet, but there's an iPhone app where you can actually, it will, Sony will send you a clip from one of their films. Every day. Every day. Every day with this app. With this you're app. You're sitting around and you're wasting, you're just wasting away with your useless little life and you think, I want to enhance my life. Let's see what clips Sony has to show me today. And you open up that app and it enriches your life with 30 seconds of something from Cruel Intentions. And you think, yes. thank you, Neil Moritz. That is rich. Uh, so you can, so, but here's the thing. It's, but it's a pattern, and it's a pattern that's not going to stop, which is the studios are scrambling to find ways to make money with some of this new media stuff. But they're, they're, trying, they're still trying to make money off the wrong audience. It, they're, they're, it's unbelievable. They're still stuck on this idea that somehow anyone who's 15 to 25 represents the coveted demographic, and we've got to have them. And you have these billion-dollar corporations all chasing the same demo when most of the disposable income and the disposable time rests with older demos. I mean, they, I don't know why they can't get that through their heads. I don't know why they can't figure that out. Because older, de because younger demos see the movies on the first weekend, which makes, which, which to them puts more money in the studios' pockets, which makes the stockholders happier when the quarterly reports come and out. And there's the problem. That's what it is. And there's the problem. It's about quarterly reporting. That's true. It's about quarterly reporting. It, you know, movies have a cycle. It takes about a year to make a movie. Okay. And they have a seasonal cycle. And you, when you're beholden to stockholders and quarterly reporting, you're not doing what's best for movies. You know, movie studios should not be publicly owned. And neither should sports teams. You heard it here. Chad, what do you think? Should uh, sports teams and movie studios be publicly owned? Be no. honest. I, yes, I should <laughs> own them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else you got there, Chad? Sony Pictures has begun production on Men in Black 3 with only the first act of the film actually scripted out. Gosh. The complicated, yeah, you're right. The complicated <laughs> time travel related plot has caused script writing difficulties, delaying the finished script and forcing the film into production without a script. New York tax incentives have been cited as the reason for the early start, but I know the real reason. That's right, me, Chad Vader has it all figured out. They actually have a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need a script, man. Once they finish writing it, however long that is down the road, they can just travel back in time and fix everything. They're time travelers. <laughs> We're through the looking glass, people. Up is down, black is white, puppies are kitties, and old people <laughs> are, are young people. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I confused myself and forgot what I was talking about. Oh yeah, Men in Black 3. <laughs> when reached for comment, star Will Smith said, quote, oh, hell no. End quote. That joke, Chad, was a hit. Right here. <laughs> in the room. Thank in you. the room. 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, I, here's the thing. You know, it, it, by the way, whenever you shoot without a script, I don't care what they say, it always leads to good things. <laughs> Honestly, that is, there, there are, this has been going on for decades, and there is, there is such a littered history, such a battlefield of movies that have tanked because they started shooting without a script and thought that they could somehow fix it on the fly. And, and it never works. I mean, Gangs of New York kind of sort of pulled it off because it wound up getting an Oscar nomination for Best Picture just because Scorsese did it. But it wasn't a good film and it didn't make money. You know, and these movies never turn out well. I, I'm just not sure about this whole thing about the uh, New York tax incentives. I mean, look, Adjustment, that, that, that's... Adjustment Bureau shot in New York and they, yeah. they saved about 30%. Just on tax, just on the, tax breaks. But I don't know that tax breaks. I, I don't know that their breaks were expiring, where they had to shoot it by a certain well, date. Well, the, the tax breaks typically work is that they are granted to you on a certain date, and there there is a time frame, and you have to use them by a certain time frame, so that those who are benefiting from the tax breaks can cash them in on the on the attributed tax year. Though, the, so there is kind of a timetable attached to it. Different states do them differently. I'm not quite sure how New York does it, but it does make sense that there would be some kind of an expiration that they'd have to be facing. But I, but I can't imagine that they couldn't work that out with the state of New York or with the investors for the sake of getting a script. I mean, come on. So, so essentially the movie will be bad, make 30% less because it sucks, exactly. which will make up for the 30% they saved I guess. by rushing it to, to completion in New York. Yeah, I, who knows. That exactly, makes, exactly. That makes sense to me. No, it does. Chad, that made sense to you, right? It makes total sense. <laughs> See? In other words, it made no sense. Chad, you're supposed uh, to stick up for me. What else, Chad? Tom Ortenberg, whoever that is, will be starting a new distribution company with AMC and Regal, two of the biggest theater chains in the country. The company will be called Open Road and is considered to be the next step in the evolution of film distribution, promising to distribute small independent films as well as large commercial ones. And that sounds great. This is one of those stories that Stupid for Movies producer Mike Rotman refers to as inside baseball, which means that Wade and Mark will get very excited about it and talk about it in great detail. And you, the viewer at home, will be lulled into a drowsy stupor. <laughs> So take it away, guys, and I will take this opportunity to catch up on my online Scrabble game. <laughs> okay, here's the thing with this story. Now, it's a I, great story. It's a great story. It is inside baseball, but it's meaningful to everybody. It's important. It is. I very think, important. Look, the exhibitors now are feeling very pressured. Yeah. Because they're at the mercy of the studio. They're at the mercy of the studios who want to start selling films on VOD yeah. for thirty bucks a pop four weeks after they they uh, they release theatrically, mm -hmm. and the, the the theaters are feeling totally squeezed. So they've got to come up with a way to do it themselves. The economics have been pinching exhibitors increasingly over the years, which means that movies are you know it, the way it works is when a movie opens. Uh, the, the opening weekend is like, say, 75% goes to the distributor and 25% to the, to the exhibitor. And that shifts more and more in favor of the exhibitor as the months go on. And that used to be great when movies would stay around for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 months. Then by the end of that, exhibitors are getting a big chunk of that. But now movies are making most of their money in the first two weekends and four weeks out, they're gone. And exhibitors are, you know, by the time their share increases... They're not getting, they're getting, you know, 80% of nothing. Which is why your popcorn prices go up. Exactly. And what uh, Ortenberg and uh, Regal and AMC are saying is, we're going to make our own movies and we're going to give ourselves all the money. It's kind of vertical integration. And is it, uh, you know, is there an antitrust thing going on? Not really, because they're regaining power that they've lost over the last couple of decades to the studios. So I think they could, if, if suddenly... The studios realize, you know what, I, we, uh, we're, why, why can't we get 2,000 screens for this movie? Why are all of our screens going to these little independent films? Well, it's because the exhibitors now are giving themselves a bigger piece of smaller movies, which nets them more money than a small piece of a big movie. And that could impact how the studios make movies, how they release movies, how much they spend on movies. It could, re it could even impact theater pri uh, ticket prices. So, I mean, this could change everything. It's not going to happen immediately, it's going to happen gradually, but five years from now we could see a very, very different landscape. I, it, yes, it just depends ultimately on the quality of the films. Yes. 
You know, I think that Which is... Which is why I trust Ortenberg. Because Ortenberg, who used to run Lionsgate and uh, who then had a very brief and unfortunate stint running the Weinstein Company, uh, I interviewed, I've interviewed Ortenberg two or three times over the years. And in uh, 2006, when I, I wrote an article for Box Office about how catastrophic that summer was... Well, I'm, I'm going to play my Scrabble app, actually. I, 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 honestly, honestly, I talked to uh, every distribution exec at every studio in town, except for Universal, who was afraid of me. And the only one who had a clue was Ortenberg. He was amazing. Ortenberg is a genius, and I'm thrilled that he's running a company again, and he will, he will prove his mettle. Done with Scrabble? Are you actually playing against Chad right huh? now? He might be. <laughs> I could never be Chad, Chad Bader's Scrabble. <laughs> Chad, He's brilliant. Chad looks like he just nailed uh, a word with a couple of X's in it. Chad, you're back. Yeah. Come on. Triple word score. <laughs> there you go. All right, Chad. Anything else? Is that it for the news this week? It's a big week. That's it, man. All right. Brilliant. All right, Chad. Enjoy Scrabble. We'll see you next week. Thank you. I always enjoy Scrabble. Good night. <laughs> Chad, everybody.